Hey guys, Tim Little here with Tactical Bassin. I'm out here doing some sight fishing and uh, I realized that there's quite a few things that uh, I do or Matt does that I don't know that we've actually ever done a video on. Um, first and foremost, uh, sight fishing is truly an art. It doesn't take the best eyesight to be good at sight fishing. Um, you know, I got 2010 eyesight. I was blessed with great eyes, um, but my eyes were open, if you will, a couple years ago when I got on the boat with Matt and uh, he could see things that I couldn't. I, it was very frustrating. Um, that dude is straight up a, 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 a sight fishing freak. Um, you know, it, it sucks because uh, you know he's he's very very good at it. But what what I learned from that, what I took away from that, is you have to go out and train your eye. You have to go out, spend some time, and know what to look for, and uh, it'll increase your sight fishing um, fishing in general. Um, quite a bit uh, the next thing is the proper equipment you know I don't think we ever really you know we're talking about sight fishing we've done um, you know done videos but I don't know that we've ever actually covered um, the sight aspect of it you know polarized sunglasses if you're gonna be sight fishing and you're looking in the water you need polarized sunglasses and I'm not gonna get into the scientifics of it all what I do want to cover um, are the basics uh, you basic sunglasses you have a gray lens green lens a rose or a copper lens and an amber lens and uh, day in and day out if you're out sight fishing the best lens that you can wear is amber sunglasses um, what these ambers do they allow a lot more light in versus a green or a gray lens um, and nine times out of ten <coughs> Amber lens is going to be your best lens to wear when you're out sight fishing uh, in the springtime. Um, well, let's talk about copper lenses. So a copper lens is 15 to 20% uh, darker than an amber lens. And what the copper lens can do, or where it shines versus the amber lens, is when there's sediment in the water. If there's an algae bloom, or if it got windy and stirred up some stuff in the water, um, I found that the, the amber lens is so bright, it's like turning on headlights. Um, when there's stuff up in the water column, you actually get kind of a reflection. And if you switch from the ambers to the coppers, it's almost instant. You can see a foot, two, three feet deeper because you just got that little bit darker lens uh, and you're not getting that reflection. So like I said, nine times out of 10, amber lenses will, will cover everything you need to do. But if there's an algae bloom or sediment, it's great to switch up to a copper pair. Um, the only to other lens that I will wear, like I said, I, I, I wear these green lenses or gray lenses uh, anytime I'm out driving or working or just, you know, whatever. But when I'm sight fishing, um, I, I stick with the ambers and coppers. The one exception is if it's a, a bluebird sky day, bright bluebird sky, crystal clear water, I will stick with the green lenses. The reason being, for some reason, that green lens, it's, it's, it's darker than the, the copper lens, but it shows the contrast very well. So you can pick up those, those lateral lines on the fish. So deeper water, um, for some reason, the, uh, the green lens lets you see um, the lateral line. So go out, get yourself a pair of amber lenses. If you can afford to, get yourself amber and copper and you guys won't be, won't be disappointed couple other things that I wanted to talk to uh, you guys about sight fishing is um, watching the fish learning the fish's mannerisms and yeah I talked about it a little bit earlier go out don't even fish I mean don't even bring a rod just go out train your eye you know see what to look for and spend some time watching the fish the fish's mannerisms um, a couple things you want to pay attention to when you're watching the fish is how, how they're acting how they're entering their bed, how they're exiting the bed, the predators, what's coming in, what's what's annoying them, what are they chasing off. Um, learn to stay away from the bed. If you can figure out where they're coming in and where they're leaving, don't don't put the boat in between that. Don't don't block their entrance and exit routes to their bed. You know, one thing you guys got to realize is these fish aren't comfortable you know they're coming up shallow to do their thing they're they're antsy you know they're 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 not comfortable so the more that we can do to stay away from them and keep them relaxed the better 
Um, pay attention to where that fish is sitting on the bed, how it's sitting on the bed. Look for those sweet spots. You know, is there a certain area that that fish t seems to want to keep going, going back to? The fish are not always eating the bait. You know, we've all been there where we're, we're watching the fish, we throw up on the bed and the fish rushes and opens its mouth and we rear down and set and we whiff. I've learned to, it's really hard. <laughs> it took me a long time, but it's almost to uh, go sight fishing uh, with a blindfold. It's, it's uh, you want to learn to set on the feel, not what you're actually seeing. Um, and it's, it's, it's really hard. It takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of patience, but if you can do that, you'll stop foul hooking your fish and uh, you'll, you'll catch, you'll, you'll put more fish in the boat. So learn to, to uh, feel. Don't, don't rely on what you're seeing in the water because a lot of times those fish, they're not eating the bait. They're running up to it, they're mouthing it and they're blowing it off the bed. They're doing all sorts of things. So, you know, if you're in a tournament and you set on that and all of a sudden you foul hook the fish and you put it in the boat and uh, now you gotta release it, most likely it's not gonna go back to the bed and uh, you just you know wasted a lot of time and uh, cost yourself a fish. Uh, what else? Clothing. Another thing Matt really opened my eyes to, uh, don't go sight fishing with a chartreuse shirt. Don't go sight fishing with a, a neon shirt or, or clothing or anything like that. Try and stay as natural as possible. You know, these fish can see you as well as, probably better than you can see them. So keep that in mind when you're, uh, you know, when you're, when you're sight fishing. Um, take some time, go out on the water, go where other people don't go. Put your boat, look, look where other people don't look. You, it's, uh, you can cover a lot of water and a lot of other people are out on the water looking at the same thing you've seen and vice versa. So if you can go and look where other people haven't looked or, or um, go where other people haven't went, you, can, you have a chance of uh, seeing and sticking a, a, a true giant. So uh, one other thing I did wanna cover, I'm not gonna get into the baits themselves, um, keep it as natural as possible. But one thing that I do that I've learned to do is I always, if I'm up shallow and I'm, I'm burning the bank, you know, I'm looking for sight fish, I'm looking for beds, I keep a light finesse rod readily available. And why I do that, um, you know, these fish are in all stages. They're pre-spawn, post-spawn, and they're on their beds, they're spawning. So when you're up cruising the bank and you see a cruiser up ahead of you, you take that real light line, you know, six, eight, 10 pound test, and uh, a real finesse worm, like a Cinco, a rubber worm, you know, something that uh, is real finessey. You lead that fish um, quite a few times. I mean, half maybe, uh, you can get that fish to eat that bait. And uh, I can think of one tournament uh, specifically that I won here on Clear Lake that uh, two, my two kickers came from, I was cruising the bank looking for beds and I saw them out cruising. I flipped that little finesse worm out there and they ate it. So um, I hope that that kind of opened your eyes to uh, some of the things that uh, I do or Matt does sight fishing. Um, you know, it's, it truly is an art reading the fish in the water and uh, seeing fish that other people can't see. It's not all, it's not all your eyesight. It's, uh, it's training your eye. It's learning the fish mannerisms. It's thinking outside the box, you know, like I said, the clothing, and boat posi positioning and all that. You know, go out and get yourself a good pair of amber polarized sunglasses. If you can afford two pair, get yourself amber and copper. You guys won't be disappointed. Just out here doing doing some sight fishing and some things came to mind that I don't think we've, Matt and I have ever really done a video on. So if you guys like the video, hit the like button. If you guys, uh, you know, remember to subscribe to our channel. We do a video every Wednesday. Um, I hope this, hope this video helps you guys. Go out there, get on the water, do some looking around, do some sight fishing. Good luck out there. Hey guys, Tim Little, Matt Allen, out here uh, chasing that world record spotted bass. Matt and I have both spent hundreds if not thousands of hours out, out here in Northern California chasing this fish. Luckily today, finally blessed enough to get one of the giants that we've hooked. We've hooked it multiple times. Um, got a 10.38 on a certified scale. Uh, one of the biggest spotted bass